Hi everybody, more updates to the TS940. <clears throat> so I'm looking, uh, wondering about this one here. Single sideband talk power improvement. And it gives me a range of serial numbers 601 through 706. This radio is actually prior to that. I believe it's a 512. Uh, so I'm curious what, why this radio wouldn't need that same if it was prior to that. I can see after that that it would uh, they'd probably put that capacitor upgrade. All it is is basically if you look there it's uh, put my finger in front of it. Uh, if you look there it's just a replacing two capacitors and they're actually they look like they were add-ons anyhow because they're on the bottom side of the uh, circuit board. So I'm going to pull the control board out and take a look and see if those capacitors are there and if they are 0, 0, 0.022 0, 0, microfarad or if I think 0 0.01 was what the schematic says. And if they are 01, is it going to do any damage to change them? Perhaps they changed uh, one of the other eyes, the uh, amplifier in there or something and it just works better. I, I have no idea why that would be a really strange range that would need it. I guess those are earlier numbers, 601 and 706. So anyhow, I'm going to pull the board out and I'll show you which board. Okay, this board here is the control board. There's a couple screws in it and I'm wondering if, if I just pull this one connector off if I can lean it back enough just to see the uh, two capacitors are going to be way down in here is where the two capacitors this is where I put my bolts in, by the way. My screws and bolts, I don't lose them. But anyhow, uh, the two capacitors are actually on the bottom side there. And like I said, this is the, the, the only thing I can see that looks like it's on this side. So possibly if I just take the screws out and remove this, I'll be able to swing the board out enough to either do the repair or at least see what the capacitors are in there. So let me take out a couple screws here and this, and we'll be back. Okay, one thing to add here when you take this out, this has a heat sink in here for the uh, regulators and the amplifier. I, what I'm going to try and do is I took the screws out for the heat sink, this part here, the metal part here. There's two screws up top, one about here, and then two on the very bottom that go from this direction. As you can see, I can move it out. So we'll go that route and see if I can get it out enough. Just taking the board screws out won't work. In fact, you can leave this edge four screws in. So, let me finish out here and see if we can get that out of there. Okay. spin the camera a little bit so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so you are able to get the board out enough with just taking one connector off and removing the heat sink. These are the capacitors right here, and I believe it's these two, but I'm going to double check just to make sure. And they are 0 0.01 microfarad, I believe that's what it is. I'll double check. It's, sorry. Sorry we're bumping that and see what this, the uh, schematic says. See if I can zoom in a little bit better so you can see them. Wrong zoom. Come on guy, focus. There we go. I don't know if that'll make matters better or worse. So yeah, let me see which ones they are and uh, I'll replace them with 0 .0022 is what it says. 0 .0022 microfarad at 50 volts. And we'll see if that does us anything. It's, I'm not, I won't be able to do it on camera. I'll come back after I get them put on. It's just too hard for me to try and hold this out and then work around the camera. So let me see what I got going on and uh, maybe we can get these in here. 
Okay, when I order these parts, like I've said before, I always like to check and make sure that they are what they say they are. This is one of the capacitors I got. It says 2.22 nanofarad. Are we good with that? We what we're looking for is 0 0.0022 microfarad. It says 2.22 nanofarad, and the packaging says. So if I can bring it in. 2200 picofarad. Are we good with that? So what you can always do, it's just moving the decimal point. Oh, and by the way, and I know this is kind of like an eye test, but that little black marking on that capacitor actually says 222. Are we good with that? So, what I'm going to do is show you. So probably any, any website you go to, you can find something similar to this, and if you look, it tells you here's the value of microfarad, nanofarad, picofarad, and here's what the code would be. So we're going to look for code 2222, and here it is right here. Let me make sure it's in the camera, and I'll zoom into it a little bit. Okay. Go down so you can see what I'm looking at. Right there. This row right here, 2222 is the marking on the capacitor, 2200 picofarad, and that's what it says on, on a piece of paper that came with it. The meter said 2.2 was a nanofarad, and the schematic says 0 0.0022 microfarad. So they are all one and the same. So it looks like we got us a keeper. So let me put those components in and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, and by the way, that's that's it. That's the board layout. These are always good to check whenever you're going to do anything. But you can see how these are kind of drawn above. That means that they're not through hole. Kind of means they were you look, this is looking like at the bottom of the board. Here's 182, and here's 183, and you can see that they both connect together through this of Q37, which I already looked up before. I know that's the base. So if you look, two of these capacitors are hooked exactly like that to the base of that transistor, so I know which ones they are. But I could always check it with an ohmmeter if I wasn't sure if there was a whole bunch of them. I could check it with an ohmmeter, stick a uh, lead in the end of that Q37 and start probing around for which one of the capacitors was had uh, zero ohms or was connected right to it. Okay, and so there it is, the finished product. The two uh, 0 0.0022 microfarad capacitors have replaced the 0 0.01 microfarad capacitors as called out in the original schematic. Looking at, oh, Back in here, you can see these two screw holes right here and here. These two guys right here. If you remember when I put the power supply in, there was two bolts that stuck up they used as ground lugs. They had wire solder to them and you just break them off. Well, I remembered that they were behind that board and I thought if I ever take that board out, I'll pull them out. And that was those two right there. So if you ever take that board out on your own, if you've done this power supply upgrade, you don't have to, but they were just bothering me, so I pulled them out. Okay, so uh, we get it all back together. When you do this, just be careful. If you do this, start all your bolts, but don't tighten them until you're done because this kind of floats around and the board kind of floats around. You got to get everything jived together. So start the bolts in, don't tighten them down. Once you get everything in, then tighten them down. Also, watch you don't pinch any wires. I'm not going to put this back together tonight uh, because uh, you know how these are with <laughs> with terminals and connections. You always find out you bump something. So uh, I want to play around with it a little bit more anyhow. I did order some relays too to mess around with the uh, attenuator. I want to find a good replacement relay for those. Anyhow, we'll take a look at the uh, the bird meter, I have it with the, the peak thingies turned on, so it reads peak. 
Uh, microphones turned to about half, and I'm on upper sideband on 28.4 megahertz to 10 meter band. Uh, just always seems to be where I test that. So, um, have the microphone probably about six inches from my face, and like I said, it's turned up to about halfway. I'm using the, uh, oh, that's really close. I'm using the MC60 just because that's what I've used all along for testing. So we'll just give it a shot and see how it works. Hello, hello, hello. One, two, three, hello, hello. X-ray. I don't know why they say X-ray or audio. I don't know, it seems to be a little bit better. Let's see. Let me see if I turn the mic gain up a little bit more what I get. Mic gain is now at almost eight. Hello, hello. I don't know, I'm getting almost 100 watts, so it does seem to be definitely better. It does seem to be definitely better. Anyhow, uh, we'll see if we can get some signal reports and some radio reports uh, and, and go from there. And like I said, I'm not going to button it up. I'll leave the, uh, the boards off it because, as you can see, it's all put back together, but there's so many connectors here, I want to make sure everything still works. Like I said, these connectors are such a sore spot with everything else. Although the bottom one here is the only one I took off. But flexing the board out of the way and everything else that goes with it. Here's the relays I spoke about. That's the attenuator relays. And I did at one point take them out and clean them. But the issue I ran into, this little guy here, you probably can't see it, but little plastic tabs broken on it. So the cover moves. And believe it or not, just that moving cover does change the uh, signal a little bit. Not, not any valuable amount, but you can hear it. So uh, I'm looking for a suitable replacement for those. Ordered a couple, and if, if what I measured, these are 10 millimeter wide by 15 high, just about. And if what I uh, picked out, 12 volt, single pull, double throw, uh, if they work out good, I'll, I'll list the, uh, the part number for them down below. Um, not too worried about turning this one, replacing this one. That's for the, the transverter. That's for attenuation 10, 20, and then both of them together for 30. So, uh, If you're troubleshooting these, and I think I might have showed it before, always watch because when there's no power, these just sit idle. But when there's power, even though you have zero attenuation, I'll show. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So when I turn the power off, you'll see them both fall. I don't know if you could actually see that. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. For troubleshooting, this is, they found this to be very helpful because just one uh, rainy Sunday morning, I was messing around with it and said, "Oh, that's how they work." But anyhow. So I'll show you, I'll turn the power on, and this is with no attenuation whatsoever on that front thingy. Watch the little white, these little white thingies here, watch them move on both of them when I power up. See how they both went over? Now I'll show you when I put on 10, 20, and then 30, they kind of both go back to where they were. Uh, but anyhow, so that, and then there's actually a resistor in there that burns up on some of them too. So if you're ever working on these and the attenuators don't work or you have weak signal, check inside there, check these guys here. I actually took mine off and cleaned them and they were great after I cleaned them. But like I said, the cap was kind of broken. And there's a resistor in there that burns up. And I forget why, I think there was a service bolt on that or something, but uh, uh, this one, it wasn't burned up. It was just the relays. All right, well, that's it for this segment of how can I deface my TS-940. So it um, seems to be working, and uh, we'll, we'll go on and press on and try and make it in pretty good shape. But all in all, I don't have a lot of money into it other than the power supply. Uh, but we'll find out those relays. Like I said, you can't even get these anymore. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya. I just uh, heard you guys in there talking. How are you doing tonight? No, we're doing good, Tim. Uh, we just checked in for the uh, 
Try counting that, and uh, me and Art and my nephew Chris are just hanging around doing a little uh, uh, ratchet chewing here. That's all. Good to hear you in there. Yeah, same to you. Uh, I can could, I could hear Chris in there. He's definitely making a good trip up here, and I can hear Art, too. So everybody seems to be doing okay. I just did a little mod on my radio. I was wondering how it sounds. Okay. Oh, yeah, you sound uh, good. You sound uh, just about normal. I pretty much knew who you were as soon as you started talking. Go ahead.